Hello, people of Broadway in New York City. This is Andrew Andrew. I can't wait to dig into Chaplin the Musical? The story of Charlie Chaplin, born in London, moves, somehow gets to Hollywood, and becomes one of the biggest stars of the silent film era. Wouldn't it be amazing if, there was, if it was totally silent? And the people were like doing this. One guy with a piano going... It's introducing... Rob McClure. Who is starring as Chaplin. I gotta say, though, on the whole... Not terribly excited about this production. When it comes to silent film stars, I prefer Buster Keaton. I'm not a really huge fan of Chaplin, so I'm hoping to learn something about Charlie Chaplin in the show. Yeah. Well, at any rate, we'll see the intermission. We won't be silent about what we think about Chaplin at the Barrymore Theater. This is the story of Charlie Chaplin's horrific past as a poor English child. It's never really explained, but there's something wrong with his mom. She can't remember song lyrics. She has that horrible disease that women had at the turn of the century where they forgot song lyrics. And that propels him to go to Hollywood and to become a film director and star in comedy film. Once they got to Hollywood, things started picking up, I thought. Yeah, except he's constantly haunted by his past. So just when something starts to get exciting, everything freezes and the mother's like, Charlie! One device that they use is that everything on stage, makeup, props, costumes, scenery, is all black and white. Wow! Now, that's kind of clever for the first couple of scenes, but after a while, this needs more color in more ways than one. Mm. But as far as the story goes, to me, I'm not interested, it's not compelling, and it's really, really heavy-handed. The comic moments are few and way far in between. I don't even understand the point of reprising the comic moments. Just go see a Chaplin film. What I want is a little bit of insight and a different perspective. And frankly, this has the same same old story of poor guy makes, makes good and then is tormented by his past that I've seen a million times. No one's bad in the show and the music is sort of adequate. Time for us to go silence. Let's go back inside and see second act of Chaplin at the very more. Um, well, we're out of the show, and I Finally. just... Finally. How many endings does one show need? I could... There were five fake-out endings to this thing. It went on and on. I will say this. The second act trended up. The mother dies, and they completely drop that plot point. There is no more mothers coming back as the ghost, reminding him of the childhood. And once she dies, it does start to pick up, and it becomes more interesting. It doesn't speak very highly of a show to say that it got exciting and fun... When Hitler showed up. Oh, Hitler did show up. Hitler shows up and you're like, that was thank funny. the Lord, now there's going to be something interesting. It reads more like a sprawling biopic book than a tight, well-oiled piece of entertainment. Actually, you know what? The most interesting character is Hedda Hopper. I want a whole show just about Hedda Hopper. End of the day, this show does not do justice to Chaplin's career, in my opinion. The show is sort of a mess. There's plot lines that don't go anywhere. The music's sort of uninspiring. The one shining point of the show is the actors on stage. He does do a, he does do a yeah. pretty good Chaplin. Yeah. Red light for me. Yeah, it's a red light. Uh, two red lights for Chaplin at the Barrymore Theater.